about a year and a half ago, I wired up some lights on a trailer, and everything went well until I plugged them into the truck, and I realized that they were really kind of dim. And I thought, you know, maybe I got crappy trailer lights, and I tried a bunch of stuff, and I checked a bunch of grounds, because, of course, as soon as anything goes wrong in a trailer, somebody tells you, dude, it's probably the ground, and it wasn't the ground. So, to explain what the problem is here, I gotta explain how I'm hooking up the truck. So, my truck, the taillights on it are 5 wire. That means that the turn signals are separate from the running lights and the brake lights. So, yeah, I've got a 5 wire system. I've got a wire for the running lights, a wire for the brake lights, a left turn signal, a right turn signal, and a ground. Trailer lights aren't like that. Trailer lights have the brake lights and the turn signals combined, so they get away with just four wires. So you got your running light, your left turn, your right turn, and your ground, and they just turn on both of the turn signals steady for the brakes. Um, trailer lights are like this because it's simple, it's cheap, and a lot of older cars and trucks have their tail lights set up the same way. The trouble with a four-wire system, of course, is when you try to hook it to a five-wire truck. How the hell do you hook it up? Well, what you do is you go out and you buy yourself a five-wire to four-wire converter box, which is what the previous owner of my truck did. The trouble is, these little boxes tend to have some voltage drop, and uh, so do the factory wires to the taillights that the uh, aftermarket box is spliced into. Let's see what we're looking at here as far as, you know, what voltage was getting to the trailer. So what I'm going to do is check. I've got a bare spot on the insulation going into the, uh, this one's a draw tight. Okay, it's got about 11 volts there. It's maybe a little lower than the battery. The truck's not running right now. About 11 volts. If I check it where it's going to the trailer light. Yeah, we got a little less, but not enough to write home about. Let's try it on the brake light circuit. About 1027. And on the other side, At about a 9.30. So it's dropping about a volt across this. Okay, this bloody mess is my new uh, version of this bloody mess. So, it's just four relays. This one's all on its own. This one's for the parking lights, tail lights, whatever you want to call them. This one's left and right high filament, and this is brake. Um, I'll throw up the uh, schematic I used. I found this online. I did not come up with this. It's real simple. You only need the three relays. I just added the park light relay um, just so that was relayed too. You can see that a whole lot better, I think. Of course, um, it's a little noisy. I'm going to be installing it with a switch. I went to look for a place in the quarter panel to mount my um, relay bodge box thingus and realized that these plugs are way bigger than they have any business being and were taking up gobs of room. And I really didn't uh, have a good place to put it in that configuration. So I came up with a different configuration. This is my um, ASCD module, which is Nissan for cruise control, because they just had to have something special, I guess. Anyway, I got the relay set up on here and jumper together, and figured I'd just take a minute here and uh, make gobs of noise with my chair so you can't hear what the hell I'm saying. Basically, what this is doing is it's routing external power um, to the trailer lights. It's only using the power that comes in from the taps into the, uh, the tail lights on the truck as a signal, and then it's basically using that to switch proper power to the lights. The nice thing about that is it means if the uh, the trailer shorts out somewhere, I blow one fuse and I don't lose the lights on the truck. The not so nice thing is I have to run another positive wire all the way from the back of the truck to the front, but I'll get over that. I can simulate turning my uh, marker lights on. Come on you, we're hooking that up. See that's lit up. So these three relays their whole job in life is to control the brighter filament in this. All right, so inside of these relays, we've got these five pins here. Those two are the coil. I've got a um, constant ground. Well, it's going to be a switched ground, so I don't have to listen to these things when I don't have a trailer hooked up, but I've got a ground 
going to all of those. And then I've got individual white wires coming off and those are signal. So these are going to be hooking in to what uh, used to run into the converter box from the truck. And then these other three here, these are the outputs. So we've got a common, number 30, a normally closed 87A, and a normally open 87. And no, I don't know how they got those numbers. This is the common, number 30. This is 87A, normally closed. This is 87, normally open. So the brake relay doesn't feed the lights directly. What it does is it determines whether power goes through this red bus or this blue bus to these two relays. Okay, if the brake light relay is off, right now the brake light relay is off, I'm not um, putting any power to it. So, you got positive and it's connecting to normally closed, that's 87A, that's the blue wire. So that's coming up to here and it's going in. Now this is the normally open. And so this is not connecting to these, and so the bright filament is not lit up. If, however, I take another positive connection and I hook it to the white wire, the bright filament comes on. Because now power is going through the red bus, which is going to normally closed, which is going to here. If I take the positive and I put it to one of these directly, obviously that one's not going to do anything because it's not hooked up because I've only got the one spare trailer light. If I hook it to this one, so that's our turn signal. But what if we want brake and turn at the same time? Well, let's hook up the brake signal. Now, the brake signal is currently going through this relay to get to that. So if I power up this relay, that will actually turn off. Also, in case I didn't make this clear, uh, yeah, so the problem is that the truck is 5-wire and the, um, the plug is 4-wire for the trailer. So we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, and a ground, so that's the 5-wire from the truck. we got 1, 2, 3, and then ground, so that's the 4-wire going to the trailer. And here's the whole mess installed back in the car. So you can see, it all fits in there pretty well. I'm going to put a switch on that ground lead so that I don't have to listen to those damn relays clicking when I'm not hauling a trailer. And there it is installed. Hmm. Now what? Okay. It's getting ground somewhere and it's not the switch. Alright, near as I can work out, the problem here is that the brake light circuit in this truck, when it's not on, um, it's not strictly off either. It just goes to ground instead of positive, which means that ground was being supplied on the signal pin. It was going through the, um, the coil and into the bus, which I have hooked to all of these relays. So basically they were all getting ground. So to combat that, got a diode. That's got her working. Okay, I got the diode installed. Got the um, wires hooked in. Yellow to left, green to right, brown to park, and then white to a convenient body ground. So yeah, now all I have to do is run power. All the way through all of the trim to the front of the truck. And now that we've run the power from the front, we've discovered a problem. And that is, with any of these uh, triggers plugged in, the green light comes on, whether the switch is on or not. What I've learned from this is that all of those white wires need diodes on them if you're going to switch it on the ground side. Okay, all the diodes are installed. The light acts like it should. Wonderful. So when I want to hook up my trailer, I have working lights, and the rest of the time, 
I don't have to listen to this. Tick tock, tick tock, tick tock, tick tock, tick tock. Had to do one last voltage test. The low filament, it's 11.56 volts. And the brake light, it's 11.2. You didn't think I'd end this video without seeing if they worked. Nice. And with the brake lights on. Thank you, assistant. So yeah, there's that all buttoned up. But I've never been one to leave well enough alone, and I had a fused 14 gauge line. So I went and got myself a cheap 12 volt socket so that I can just uh, hook up 12 volt devices in the back of my truck. You know, for those times I want to stare into the darkness while I'm draining my battery in the rain. This is probably not a typical use case, but hey, I can do it now. We have a helper in the shop today. I'm not sure it's very uh, helpful though. Dad is applauding it in hopes that it will uh, take the affirmation of its life. Arr, go find a window, you stupid moron. There's like four huge holes in the building and you can't find them. Okay. Arr, there you go. Ha, ha, ha.